It's all about the money, money, money. It's all about the money, money, money. Duke about the boring. I don't know the words. Do 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 do. Except the money. It's all about the money, money, money. It's all about the money, money, money. It's all about the money, baby. And I was checking some facts earlier because, you know, I was having a go at the false Jews that we're not allowed to have a go at. And I'm going to be mentioning, you know, what they are and everything in this video. And this is just my opinion. But it's my considered opinion. Um, and we should be allowed to have an opinion. Okay. So, you know, I was checking some facts because I what you know, I was thinking about right, there's three hundred thousand false Jews in Britain. I mean they don't know they're false Jews, but or maybe they do. Um that's point four percent, zero point four percent. Um yet look at the influence they have. They have a way too big an influence for you know, what should be a minority. Well, they are a minority, but they have the influence of a majority. Uh, the BBC it was basically run by them for years. Uh, they're lawyers. They're, they're in the media, you know. I mean, who owns News Corp and uh, Associated Press? And, and So there's two, Reuters and Associated Press. Who owns them? Rockefeller or Rothschild, one of them, right? You know, the, the whole news system is owned by them. And the World Bank and the IMF. I mean, look what they've done to Africa. Just put it in permanent debt. There's no hope for them. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. They're just in debt and paying the interest fees. You know, and how much do other countries owe the IMF and World Bank? And um, so this is something I wanted to check because I want to say, well, look, because, you know, Rothschild owns the IMF and he's a Jew, right? So there's no poor Jews and the world is basically owned by Jew. But I checked and it's not actually true because in the last couple of decades or even a, dec yeah, like a couple of decades, China has been lending money to countries. And they've actually surpassed the the amount of money that's owed. They've actually surpassed the World Bank and the IMF and all other countries' bonds and everything, government bonds put together. So in a way, I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking, well, oh, good. They've, you know, China has always been an, a civilization a nation that has cared about defending itself okay that's what it's famous for it's famous for that great wall and it you know there's a lot of things said about the wall you know it's less to keep people out more to keep people in or whatever but there are four thousand year old civilization right and what happened in the was it the early 1800s when or late 1800s when, you know, Britain invaded China, basically. Japan invaded China. You know, and I guess that's what they saw as, you know, their major failing. We let our country get invaded. So they get a new system and Mao, you know, is strict and there's genocide. Okay, that's in the past, you know. And they've got their disputes with Taiwan. And I've always been quite anti-China. I'm only just recently starting to look at it a different way. Um, I'm looking at it in a way that China is just all about defending itself. And particularly since this uh, COVID-19 thing. Um, you know... If it was China doing it, why would they would they start it in their own country? I think it's much more likely that they're a victim here and it was put off in their country first. Done by nefarious peoples that we know exist. So 
that's going to change their attitude to the world. They are going to be much more about defence. Their building islands in the South China Sea is a defensive strategy. They're not looking to expand and take over. Well, they might be, but they've never done that before. But you could see that they're doing that to defend because, you know, if you wanted to get at China, you could go and take one of those islands. It would give you a base to attack China and to disrupt its you know, trade or whatever. So I guess they've gone and built those islands in the sea so that they don't have to impose themselves on somebody else's land, but they can have a base there to, to defend from. And with all their routers and their technology and the Huawei stuff, again, this almost, I could see this is like a, you know, a more expanded wall of China. And it's a, you know, it's a technological barrier. I and mean, I just don't think we should be so quick to criticize China when they've got like 1.4 billion people that are obviously not that unhappy because if they were that unhappy they you know they'd rebel so whereas we've been told for years and years and years that people in China can't check the news you know around the world and see what's going on because it's all filtered you know, it's quite possible that it's flipped the other way it's flipped the other way around and you know we we don't get the truth about china it's it's filtered through our avenues of information and we know that we know the mainstream media has an agenda you know uh, you can almost just take it now whatever agenda they're trying to push uh, you can probably figure isn't you know even true and it's it's part of their their way to control what we believe about the world so false Jews what am I going on about false Jews well if you were you know a Nazi and you could see that you weren't going to win the war and they could you know especially once the Americans joined in you know you might look for a, a way to get out you know they were on the verge of they would have really been in control of the world if Britain hadn't fended them off we'd be doing more than just speaking German we would have had full-on eugenics Aryan race and the power they had you know if they'd taken on England if they'd won what the Americans had done I mean what the fuck was Franklin Roosevelt doing the guy in the wheelchair why did he wait so long? You know, with all their scientists, the, the German scientists, what they were on the ver, what they had discovered, you know, they were discovering it, this nuclear bomb. But so this is what I'm thinking, right? It's not that the, the reality of the world today isn't that far away from if the Nazis had won. It's almost like, okay, they didn't win the war, but they still managed to cling on to something. And, and what was it they could have done, right? So they got, what, three million Jews or six million Jews in Germany at the time and Poland or whatever. And, you know, they killed them all. But there's so many people you hear about who are survivors. Oh, yeah, you know, every... They're survivors. I thought they killed them all. So, if you were a Nazi, how difficult would it be for you to starve yourself for a few months? Maybe they had a little operation, a little tie around the stomach thing, so that they wouldn't be able to eat that much food. Tattoo on your arm. Because there's a lot of blue-eyed Jews in Israel, and I don't know why. how come they're blue-eyed. 
And if you're a Jew, by the way, and you're a woman, you can you can marry a, any man, and your children will be Jews. But if you're a man, you have to marry a Jewish woman. A male Jew can't. If a male Jew goes and marries someone who isn't Jewish, the children won't be Jewish. So they'll be ending their line there. Probably some people find ways around it. So after the war, you know, the, uh, what, what was going on in Argentina? How come so many um, blonde-haired, blue-eyed people ended up in uh, Argentina? These, these Jewish survivors... A number of them could have been Nazis. Heck, even all of them could have been. I think that's unlikely. I don't think all of them were. A good number, I think, is very likely. Now, all their information and powers and stuff was given over to the Allies, the winners. And they, you know, as we know, we, they carried on experiments. Some of these German scientists, the, um, I've forgotten the name of it now, but they're doing some pretty freaky stuff to people to find out what makes them tick. So, you know, are these sickos still in charge? So that's one set of false Jews. And the other set of false Jews are the fact that, you know, these... Uh, white Jews didn't even claim the rights to Israel until 1100 AD because in 900 AD they were picking a religion they were stuck between Islamic countries and Christian countries and they didn't want to pick either side because then they would have problems with the other side so they pick a third religion they pick Judaism and they take on the customs and and that grows. Because the real Jews, if you like, the the ones mentioned in the Bible, the sons of Jacob, were scattered. Scattered all over the world. It says they'll be taken in yokes of iron to far off places and scattered. Oh, who did that happen to? Back, you know, in the Dark Ages... different coloured skin for a start the coloured skin you'd expect from hot arid places and they're known to have certain qualities especially musical so you know you can put two and two together if you like but the, uh, the current Israelis, okay, they've won the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> but where's the music? It's not there. It's not in them. The, you, you know, the factual, the only factual Jewish people who can show their links right back to those days, 2,000 years ago, are the Ethiopian Jews. They still do the customs. They did convert to Christianity, but they still have those roots there. You can't deny that. Ethiopian Jews are children of Israel. I don't know why you call them Jews. I mean, that would be the tribe of Judah. Well, I don't have all the answers here, but, you know... There's enough there to know that the current narrative is just totally squid, screwed wrong. And then when it mentions in the book of Revelations about the false Jews, it says that more than once, and the synagogues of Satan. And they're powerful people, so they probably would get a mention. 
It's the power. It's the 26 richest people in the world own the same amount as the poorest 3.4 billion. That power. You know, that's a ratio of 1 to 1 1.4 billion. No. 1 to 140 million. Is one person worth 140 million other people? <laughs> no way. Not in any reality. Is that right? So this is the thing you should be getting uppity about. The unfairness. That's what we should be getting up to about. Sure, people want to pass stuff on to their kids. That's natural. But the thing is, you know, people make a million. They don't want to stop there. They want another million. And the more you get, the more you can make, the more you can suppress other people. And you, you must be loving it, otherwise you wouldn't continue in a whirlwind of excitement. Look, I'm just saying, I'm not having a go at any individual. They're living their life. I don't know their life. But what I'm having a go at is what we need to be getting interested in getting active about what's the word <laughs> animated let's get animated about unfairness and the money and ownership you know why should anyone own land a bit of the planet why should anyone own that shouldn't we all have a right to it an equal right to the planet we're on. God gave us the earth. He gave it to Adam. And we're all Adam's descendants. <laughs> he gave us the earth. We should have we should have that right to it. In a sense, there shouldn't be any ownership of land. And that way everyone would have a share of it. Anyway, probably couldn't just swipe a law like that straight away that would be a bit of chaos but anyway um, <clears throat> so I think uh, you know China with its money lending has helped take some of that power back away um, you know whether it was by design, you know, who gave China this power, who gave China this ability, well, it was partly due to the climate change stuff, which, you know, big oil companies were so against uh, any talk of this, you know, what, climate change, nonsense, right, it's nonsense, nonsense. Um, because what happened is they said, okay, right, you know, we got to stop uh, polluting, right? So developed countries could, had the money and stuff, could do stuff, could change their factories and and stuff and, and make them less polluting. Um, but a lot of what happened, obviously, is that companies went to set up their factories in countries that could pollute countries that could pollute were the developing countries who could say right it's not really fair on them if we if we say look this climate change problem you've got to stop your factories um because you know ruining the planet but we've been doing it for 300 years and that's kind of why we need to stop so you can understand like the argument there um but i guess they didn't really anticipate just how much of the manufacturing would just go over to to those countries or maybe they did anyway as it turns out you now we're all dependent on because we can't make stuff in these countries anymore it seems you know we've we kind of lose because technologies move on who knows how to set up a factory to make a 
an Intel Pentium chip. I mean, these these are really, really highly developed uh, machines that are making these chips to the standard that we'd expect. You know, it's got to be like 1.3 million microns wide and stuff like that. You know, it's it's not the sort of stuff that you can just do in your garage. But I think what you know we'll have to get some manufacturing just so we can be self-sufficient. But anyway, so I think it's a good thing that uh, China now has a big chunk of the power because I think China isn't interested in taking over the world. I I just don't think they are. I think. If you've grown up in China, you've grown up with stories going back 4,000 years and wisdom and stuff. And even though they don't have God, you know, God is with them because God is with everyone. And they've got that wisdom, they've got all that heritage. So I think that probably produces people who are less likely to be you know maniacs who want to take over the world and you know as to the actual maniacs who want to take over the world we we have some some obvious candidates I and mean, we know society organizations like the Fabian Society whose motto is to strike bloody hard or something and they have a an emblem of a wolf in sheep's clothing so they're deceptives and one of their co-founders is George Bernard Shaw well, I've got that name wrong uh, you know is a fully into the eugenics you know selecting your population and discouraging or even sterilizing particular women because you know you didn't really want the offspring in your population. You know, playing God. And, um, in fact, 75 years ago today, the Labour Party with Clement Attlee won against Winston Churchill in a landslide victory. And about... 200 odd of Labour's MPs were Fabians and there's comments about the 1945 you know after the election that going into the House of Commons, Commons reflected it was like a Fabian school reunion so these Fabians these we take our time but when we strike, we strike hard, or the wolf in sheep's clothing. And they, and what those Fabians did, one of their first major acts, was to um, create the NHS, the National Health Service. Whereas before, you'd paid, like, the equivalent of today, 50p, to go and have a 10-minute chat with the doctor... At the bottom of the street, they have the you know little clinics posted here, there, and everywhere. It's fifty p to go and have ten minutes. If you need another ten minutes, there's another fifty p. If you needed a prescription, it was fifty p. So it wasn't ex that's today's money. So then it was what, five bob or whatever they called it. So very cheap. So people go when you need it makes a lot of sense but the, the NHS is you know it's just turned this this turned this country into you know a laboratory forget the white mice look we got a population of many millions here we can uh, we can experiment on them you had all the formaldehyde children you know born with like stubby arms and stuff because of something they gave pregnant women 
you know, they were quite just happy just to, you know, take these risks and, and um, just didn't they care? Or was it, you know, who knows what they're, but they seem to have some dark goals. Right, you set up an organisation like that, they believe in eugenics, they believe in being deceitful, you know, it's their way, they, they, it's a cult, and it's a cult that's still going, and God knows how old it is. It's just these weirdos have been given some power and they continue it. Then there's, you know, the, the Jesuit priests, you check out their oath, it's grotesque. They think they're doing it in the for God. So, what we say? Judgment Day. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to worry about it. It's like God's plan, but I wanted to test out my mic. It's probably far too quiet because I'm sat back here speaking normal. Anyway. <coughs> it's my impression of the state of things. But it's getting interesting. You know, we've got satellite wars and... Router wars, money wars and... You know, there's every type of war going on except the actual shooting, which is, which is good. I don't think we want to be. I mean, there's shooting going on, but not worldwide. The, it, you know, I suppose the most annoying thing is this internal war, this information war, this propaganda, and the divide and conquer. You know, and there the power is in the media. But they're losing their power. They are losing it. And I just want to say as well, when I finish, the Trump and Boris, they're, they're learning how to play the media. I mean, I think Trump's known for a while. And probably so as Boris. But I've just clocked on to that. They know what they're doing. Say, say, you're, say I'm the Prime Minister of the country and I want, you know, I'm doing some good things and... And the media aren't talking about it, you know. Like, oh, I'm going on and doing these good things. The media won't even talk about it. You know, a little section like this, you know, no one's noticing what the good thing I'm doing. So, you know, then if you made a mistake, boom, the media will pound on it, just front pages. What an idiot. He hasn't done anything so far, and now all he's done is this. You know, and you just, you know, could be made to look a massive idiot. So... What you do is you say something or do something that you know the media is going to jump on, right? And they're going to make they're going to make their conclusion. Oh, he's done this! What an idiot! Da, 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 da. But you were very careful when you said what seemed like a you know an unthought through statement. You were very careful in what you actually said, and then when they come at you all that stuff and it's all over the page you have your answer which is da, 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 da. you have your answer prepared no you know you've got this wrong no you've got this like trump did with galay maxwell saying he wished wished her the best you know the the media made a big thing about that didn't we heard that a lot and, and then afterwards she, no i just hope you know she doesn't end up like epstein did you know we want her testimony we want to get these people caught right <laughs> So it's just things like that. Excellent. Good job. Okay. Ciao for now. Bye.